this is our presentation of Base Camp. I am Kwaku. And I'm Kabao. And there's Mr. Pashi in the back. That's our coach. Um, next slide, please. Okay. Base Camp is a project management um, software that our team uses to organize um, files and it's just a great way to communicate with every member and along with that it allows us to connect with other people just so we can further plan out things in the future. So starting off of our one of our most important um, things of Basecamp when you log in is you are going to see um, this project management page where it shows all the different teams or different files that you could choose to put all the like different features within each kind of thing. So we kind of use it to organize our sub teams, our different um, like mentors of FLL or FTC teams, those type of things to have that organization of these specific people to talk to depending on the situation. A great um, thing about Basecamp is that under those project management groups is it has a to-do list which allows for each sub team to create a list of what they need to complete throughout the season and it allows them to track their completion and like how much they need to do during a meeting. Especially that you can also put on different dates of when you can have them do just to let everyone know what time frame to get that. Oh wait. And you can assign people to these to do tasks. Um, this is the message board which every single uh, project management has. Um, it's kind of like our announcements page, or like where we just tell everyone about the different events going on, or different problems that we have to bring up. We can tell them to the different sub teams or the whole team. So maybe like we have an announcement of like a new event that's happening, upcoming like MROC, we can just post it in the page and everyone will see the announcement and get all the plans of like the itinerary and those different types of things. It's uh, really useful for like having things that you need there all the time, like an absence form or like a thing that they have to fill out that you just need them to do for the whole year or you can just have them for as like little blurbs that you just kind of need out there. Kind of like message boards, um, Basecamp offers real-time chat. So right here is Campfire, which is under project management groups. And this allows you to speak with everyone in that project management group. So this was um, in our main HQ. So that's everyone in Rhymeter Robotics. And over here is a ping which is where you can create like group chats or you can directly chat with someone individually. And that was me with one of our sub team leads. Do you guys allow, um, I guess, how do you guys handle like mentor and student chat and everything? You guys? We'll touch that in that. All right, perfect. Oh, okay. so cool. yep. So file sharing is within these groups. Uh, once you go into a certain project management, uh, there's going to be the campfire, and then there's also the message board. But there's going to be this file sharing, where you can put all your files for the team, or the different like area that you want, where you can just have them all stored in one place, so you don't have to worry about like where did I find this file of like instructions or things that were for the team that I should memorize. You can just put them in the files. Uh, you can put like scans. Uh, I think pictures and like videos, there's a lot of things you can put in there. So it's a great resource to just place everything in one place and you can also label. Okay, a great thing about Basecamp is that under the project management groups, it has like a calendar and schedule thing, which is really useful for when like kids don't know when you have meetings or there's like different things going on and like you can like set things in advance so kids know what's coming up and we use this a lot and i'll um, say my favorite feature is the add to your google calendar mm -hmm. i can add that to my home google calendar for my wife 
And she doesn't have to be in base camp, but she gets all of the events. Yep. Um, this is also within every project management uh, check-ins where it just shows the progress of each project. Um, these can be um, used for different situations for like, uh, I know for design it's probably going to be like robot progress or um, CAD progress. Um, business might be for like impact or um, different types of like social media uh, things that they have planned. Um, you can make it the different like kinds of progress of different colors, like how we have there. Um, and it's really nice for keeping things on track and making sure everything is organized and letting the team see it as a very big, like, we need to focus on this kind of thing. It's a very big thing at the top of like the screen within each project management. So you will be able to, everyone will see the progress. So when it comes to our team, we're part of SAFRA, which allows us to connect with different first teams within our county. And um, through project management groups, um, we have stuff set aside for FLL or FTC, or one of our biggest things is Maker Fair Sheboygan. And we can um, invite people from like outside of Red Raider Robotics and have them work on certain projects, and they can only work on that group. This is one of my favorite features that's recently new. Um, it's called Card Table, where it's kind of like a to-do list, but you can have it all laid out in cards, where you can have them assigned to people, kind of similar to to-dos, and have like assign due dates and like lists inside of them. But you can have them in different sections of what you would want them to be in. So at least here. We have it where it's like we have an in progress one and an upcoming focus. So you can just have those like things that you like pop in your mind that you can just put it down quick and put it in a different section just for everyone that you want to see to be like, oh, okay, this is a thing I can remember to just in this file. Or if you want certain people to know um, to get this done, you can assign it to people um, within a certain uh, project management. Um, and now we'll hand this off to Pashi to talk about safety and data. So I know one of the main concerns, and this is where, um, you know, I did see that Slack updated their, their uh, terms with messaging and so on and so forth to be a little more, more conducive. But with Basecamp, um, the, uh, uh, I was going to do a little bit more, but I, don't, I actually don't need to. As the admin over the admin over top of Basecamp, um, for me as the you know owner of the base camp, which uh, by the way, if you are affiliated with a school or nonprofit, which most of us are, base camp's completely free. Doesn't because I know very darkness you guys started using it. Yeah. The whole whole thing, thing. Everything. Free. And we're talking like for companies, this is a very expensive software. Extremely. Um, for data safety. Um, I can go in, search one person and every single ping that person has, and I can download any single ping forever from that person. Uh, that, with that being said, that means that if there are interactions that we're concerned about or, um, you know, I'll give a for instance. Um, I knew that there was a negative interaction happening between two students, but I wasn't sure if there was any data on Basecamp to support that. I went into Basecamp, downloaded other conversations. They said three things to each other on Basecamp, so I knew that it wasn't happening through our system, that whatever interaction they were having. So um, it helps us protect students, helps us protect mentors, and in general, gives us the access we need to make sure that if something does happen, we have safety in mind at first. So, um, and we work with Sheboygan Area School District, so uh, the account is under me, I'm a teacher in the district, so then um, at any time if I need to get something because we have an open records request through the school district, we can knock it out real quick. Yes? I know something I did is I contacted them about the admin pro pack, so I yep. have all the students are actually in a, um, 
they're not technically members of the organization, they're like a second tier, I think okay. what it is, um, called. And I was able to disable the pings for them. I'm still trying to figure out if it makes sense for this to do, so we just keep it in the chat, yeah. like the open chats, but I'm curious if you guys... So we didn't disable the pings because uh, we also want to foster that professional communication and collegiality mm -hmm. that we have. Um, you know, uh, and I feel like I, I also want my my captains and leads to be able to ping me when they need to if they want to have a sensitive conversation okay. that I still have track that I'm protected as the teacher mentor, but also that they can have the reassurance that no one else will see that message other than me or other mentors that need to see it. Um, from that perspective of like, hey, I'm at, I'm you know I'm as captain I'm really struggling with you know. Our marketing lead. I say that because she's not going to cause any problems. But uh, <laughs> the uh, like, I'm having issues with this other student. I'm trying to help redirect them for these things, and they're really not listening to us. Okay, that's when a mentor steps in now. Like they're they're not following through on these expectations, and we can have that conversation. So uh, having the pings enabled, I think, is huge for our team culture in that respect. Um, but then uh, we are very transparent with the kids of like, I have everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. cool. So when we release base camp to kids, don't don't mess around with it. So that's something that maybe we need to look at doing is like an actual base camp yeah. contract. We we, we train them how to use it and everything, but especially the parents. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, we were very transparent of, we have everything, it is all there, and I have it stored forever. So even if something comes up years later and you say this, this and that, I have it from all my alumni. Like, it is there. And that's the way I wanna keep it and make sure that I have all of that just in case. Luckily, our kids have not had any issues. And that's, you know, we, we gear this around a lot of our team culture stuff. We do put parents on base camp. We put them as following our HQ stuff, which is like our general all team. But then there's just a parent's spot where only parents see that. And then, you know, uh, our captains also see that stuff. But that's, um, that's because we release a lot of things to our captains to do that stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, that's one of the main things that made me stick with Basecamp was just that ability to archive all the data and not have the potential of losing any data. So, um, how much data does it store? Uh, all of it. No, I mean, <laughs> with the but free version, how much do you get? Is it they haven't. No. They haven't given me a limit. They have not. Okay. You mean like the it, file system is just infinite storage? I I believe there's something on there, but it's like. Hundreds of terabytes. Yes, it is pretty insane. So, um, but I mean, uh, I don't know if you guys, a lot of you work in either the Microsoft or Google realm. Um, a lot of those documents are electronic. You can actually link a Google Doc or a Google Sheet or things like that in. So that doesn't take up your data. Um, same with like Canva stuff. So we do a lot of <coughs> Google and Canva. So when you see things pop up, the only thing I think we put up as PDFs is we'll put like permission slips as PDFs so parents can print them and uh, you know bring them in and sign. What communication were you using prior to this? Mm. Email. Just email. <laughs> but even uh, for like an I've been email. using I've been using Basecamp for uh, probably seven years now. Okay. I'm so, just curious how the transition mm -hmm. went because we're on multiple now to go to one single source. What that transition looks like. It's really more of convincing kids that they should put Basecamp on their phone yeah. and disable email notifications because email notifications will fill up their inbox. <laughs> Some parents like the email notifications and they don't go on Basecamp. And that's another feature that we didn't touch on is if you send a message on Basecamp and it goes to their email notifications, they hit reply and type it in, it will send it right to Basecamp. Sometimes some parents don't realize that, and you're like, okay, I have to delete that entire like email chain that that person sent, but that's, you know, just not understanding technology. So we, were, you, we mm -hmm. have used Slack because we have people in the business world that, you know, that's their thing. Mm -hmm. And to me, Slack is not super intuitive. 
do we find this to be more intuitive? I guess, yeah. I, I, I'm living, breathing base camp, so you guys tell based on your experience, because now you've been doing this for three going on four years now. Personally, I really like how the foundation is. Uh, everything just kind of is really organized for me, especially once you get used to the software. Okay. Um, especially how you can organize it within those project management. Um, I have had only maybe iffy problems, but it's not really like the system really. It's more of just like figuring out things uh, throughout. I've been still learning new things that they've been adding. And like, they're really transparent, especially with like feedback and they'll tell you if there's updates and stuff. Um, but for me, at least, I've been enjoying it, um, not really had any problems. Uh, it's more of just teaching it to people that's more of a struggle. But So how do you onboard new students? Um, through admin land here, uh, we're able to... No, like, like how, how do you, you teach them, them the system? Oh, sorry. No, that's, that's good. Um, that's right. It's a part of our preseason like, lessons. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, like, we try to basically have like a day where we just are like, Everyone, this is what our human communication app uh, here, how to use it, where is everything on the app, or how to use it on a computer. Um, these are probably the main things that you guys are going to be able to organize. These are the things that you guys can look over, um, and then basically um, just explain the different features and when to use them, uh, our expectations out of the students, and making sure um, we all get that transparency that everyone understands mutually. And like when students first join the team, like I think we have a project management group where it's just like the ones that are beginning to join. Um, before, like that's before like they decide on like being set on a sub team. Mm -hmm. Like I think we try to maximize like communication through base camp rather than like email. Mm -hmm. And. So it's an app, but it's accessible like on it's a Chromebook. Web, it's web-based yeah. it's web -based. and it's uh, it's a application. application. So you can get the app on your phone, okay. and you can have it up on your desktop. You can have it enable notifications on your desktop. You can have it, you know, so you can treat it as a web interface or as a an application. Um, I, you know, interact with both. I also found that you can do certain things on the the web-based that you can't do on the app. Yeah. But once you set it up on the web base, it's you don't have to, it's there. Yeah. Not, yeah. You don't have to change it. So there's certain things, I mean, like, that, that's the thing for me is I, you know, I, I teach the engineering classes, so I'm either always at my computer, mm -hmm. so then I'll have it up on there. But then when I'm, like, at home and kids are messaging me or, like, you know, I'm, I'm stuck somewhere else, I can still, we can still interact. or. Like at competitions, we set up we set up like all of our information for like the regional on Basecamp, and then we have the kids set up pin groups with them and their their mentor that they're checking in with, and that group of kids that they're checking in with that mentor, and then they have a dialogue back and forth. I'm so much more comfortable with my mentors having contact with kids on Basecamp than them giving out their cell phone. Yeah, for sure. And then my mentors are like, I don't have to give my cell phone number out. Awesome. They don't need to know my phone number. So that they're not, you know, calling, trying to break up. No, but <laughs> stuff like that. It it creates another safety net for mentors. Um, is there a way you can attach, uh, like attach like DXF files, SolidWorks, uh, on chain files to these projects, or is it? Yeah, you can put any file type you want in there. Yeah. So all that stuff can go right into Basecamp, and you could organize your files that way. Um, so when you're trying to share, like. For instance, we'll have DXFs and SVGs of like our logos and stuff like that for people to pull in to do things with CAD and 3D printing, and we'll have a lot of our file management that way, other than like the stuff we're doing with Onshape. So. And then my my other question too is like you said that you could go back and look, but is there like certain files that anyone can just go back in time, like let's say six years from now, this is a whole different team because everyone graduated and it's like gone or alumni now. Is it possible for the newer students to go back in time and also see the same things? So they have an archive feature. So <laughs> there are certain things where it's like, this is really old, but it may be important someday. I just archive it. So uh, like if there's certain chats, like certain message board posts from previous, like for regional ones, like I'll like archive those because it's like, OK, we're not quite sure what's going on with this regional this year. Let's go look at last year's stuff. So we're going to go look at the archive file. or. Um, you know, that's 
if you're looking for like archiving CAD, things like that, you could potentially do that. I would still look at something like GrabCAD for that stuff, just to, you know, because that will hold on to files as well. So, um, plus we use, we've got, we shifted away from SolidWorks and have gone on shape for a yeah, lot of our CAD yeah. stuff now. Yeah. Um, and honestly, our, our CAD time last year was probably cut in half in comparison wow. to previous years. Yeah, we're, we're switching over to on shape. Yeah. It, there's a lot of tools yeah. and it's made our, would you would you agree with that? You you did CAD, you were yeah. mostly CAD last year. Yeah. Workflow was significantly easier. Oh. So um, like he could have a file, like a file, CAD file open at the same time as someone else. Yeah, that's one of the reasons. And it, yeah, the collaboration was up through the roof. Yeah. It can also be kind of fun. What is that part moving? <laughs> 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 It's not that good. Yeah. Yeah. Does it give you a good way to segregate? So, for example, 2023. Here's my. Here's all of my project management files that are for this year. Next year, I want to split that off and keep it separate from the. Oh, so, so like in the documents and files, there you, there's a folder feature. Okay. So if you're doing documents that way. You could also set up new project groups each year if you wanted to. Some people like to do that. Because you can set up the project and you can copy it the same way you did for the previous year. It'll just, it's like you won't have any of the files in it. Yeah, so you can do a fresh start each time if you want to. That's kind of the beauty of it. I know I'm answering some of those kind of questions, but those are the kind of main other ones. So, um, yeah, any other questions? My room, again, a student thing. So a lot of my kids didn't like Slack. I think they missed notifications of things. Did you guys experience any missed communication on a student end? Or deliberate or unintentional? I don't know, sometimes I wonder if they don't like so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There are kids who don't get notifications over one who don't have face cancel. Okay. So, I mean, I, I tend to. I have missed notifications in Slack, so I kind of get where they're coming from, and I don't know why, because most of the time I get so uh, whatever. With the rest of the, a lot of the FRC teams in the state using Slack, that's the only reason I have Slack, mm -hmm. and that's the only time I'll go on to Slack, is if I either I need something or I know something might be coming up, so I'm going to go look because I don't know if I missed them. Yeah, and I, I don't. I, I find, I, I, I personally, personally really dislike Slack. Yeah. But, it, it, but that's because I've been working with Basecamp for a long time, and it's not a, I'm like holding my stance of Basecamp, it's because Everything I think there. this is a better product. Yeah. Okay. Cool. You guys have any other student questions, concerns so that you guys if have? If you have an alum that graduated or, or mm -hmm. weren't involved in the base camp, like a transition, or does, you know, if you want to invite them, do you invite them via email? And then they would just have to download the app. And they can actually stay. even swap their, hold <laughs> their emails. So they could put their new, their like non-school email in there mm -hmm. and keep their account. And then we just, I mean, you guys can talk about it. You started helping with that in the spring. Yeah. Transitioning alumni. Mm -hmm. So is it just like a basic for them just to keep up with the team if they want yeah. to? We, we switch them to following the HQ and then we create an alumni channel. Okay. Um, it's very useful for like if they want to see like upcoming competitions from us or like just see how we're doing like with the projects and stuff. Or sometimes they'll come in and then just ping me like saying, hey, you know, I'm thinking about coming to this or I can you know, sometimes I'll ping them and say, hey, we need volunteers for um, FTC competition. So is there a way to have it so that like, um, or captains or leads and stuff have more access to most of the stuff? Yeah. Um, um, I put them in charge of stuff, so they have to do all the work. <laughs> um, <laughs> these are your problems. <laughs> yeah. We need to go through and delete all these parents that aren't here, aren't like of our kids anymore. You figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I need students like you guys. You want to come down, Franklin? Well, we're going to do a walkthrough just so you guys can have a visual of what I think we're, we're running out of time. Yeah. But um, definitely look into it. And uh, if you have questions, you can always reach out to. 
um, <laughs> any of us, and we can get you on the right way. And Veridermis uh, took it on last year after they went to our session last year, which is mostly on marketing and social media, but then turned into a base camp conversation. So we decided, hey, we should just talk about base camp. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can talk to either yeah. us and we can help you out. So. Thanks, Thank you so much. Uh, don't forget to fill out the sheet uh, before you leave out uh, and tell how many people were with you. Yep. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks,